Hey guys and welcome to another tutorial. In the last episode we had a werebear that could do the messiah move of walking on water because we didn't have any collision shapes on our tile map yet. So in this episode we'll be adding those tile map collisions to make sure that the player can only go where we want the player to go. Let's get started. Right, let's dive right into it. Select one of the tile maps that contains the tile set that you want to add collisions to. Then go into the tile set editor by selecting the tile set and then select the specific set that you want to add collisions to. Now we're first gonna start with free drawing a polygon. We're gonna take this box as an example. This is an atlas tile with different regions and you can select the different regions of this atlas tile. Now we're going to start without with this box. As you can see, the snap is currently turned off. So that's what allows us to free draw rectangular collision shapes and polygon collision shapes. We're going to go with the collision polygon because, well, this is isometric art and rectangles are rarely useful to us. You can simply put the uh, different connection points into the tile. You can free draw them and you complete the shape by clicking the uh, first bulb that you have drawn out. You can, uh, you can drag these around a little bit to perfect your shape. And there you have it. Every tile every of this specific type that you now add to the world will have that coalition shape. There's one important thing. These uh, atlas style, or this entire atlas style shape, this region, has a texture offset of minus 32. That means that this texture will be drawn 32 pixels upwards. What that means is that the coalition shape will stay in the same spot but the texture shifts. And as we have used the texture as a reference point to where our collision shape needs to go, we also have to offset the shape to minus 32. That will make sure that the texture and the shape stay together. Now what's very important, if I'm now selecting this region, go back to collision and draw the shape of this box, the shape offset is already minus 32. That means that the shape, if I use this texture as a reference, will be away from the box. So my tip is every time you draw um, shapes, whether they be collision shapes, occlusion shapes or navigation shapes and you use the texture itself as a reference point as to where the shape needs to go, make sure you set your shape offset back to zero, draw the shapes you need to draw and then put the shape offset again back on there. If you don't do that, you get different offsets between all your different collision shapes and you'll have um, a hard time fixing that back up. So with that said, let's continue now with drawing shapes with the uh, texture snap or the, uh, the, uh, the grid snap because that works a little bit differently and it creates some interesting options. Do you want to learn how to design and make games? Or maybe you just want to learn more about Godot? Subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. Also, if you're curious about the game development projects that I do myself within Godot, I live stream my game development sessions every Tuesday and Thursday on Twitch. The link, description, the details and the schedule are all in that description box below. Now let's continue. Right, grid snapping when you draw coalition shapes. When to use it and when not to use it. Well, with this box right here where we use the free draw polygon, this is a perfect moment where you do not want to use the snap. As you just want to free draw specifically where that specific piece or that asset is. Now, when it comes to things like walls and cliffs, where the walls line up with each other and the player sort of needs to have the experience that it's one wall with like one edge, that's the moment that you want to use the snapping possibilities of drawing these collision shapes. And I'll explain to you why. When I uh, select this specific atlas style with the uh, straight faces, if I were to go to the collision and without snap, I would draw a polygon right here. Um, I do have to make sure that I select the right region in my atlas style. I draw the polygon, doesn't really matter how I draw it, what's most important with walls and with cliffs like this is that the face is most important and not actual the footprint. In, actually uh, smaller is better when it comes to um, these sort of walls and cliffs. So if I would do this and let's say I would also add it to here but if I add maybe the collision shape a little bit differently. I'm exaggerating a little bit now on purpose. What you'll get is that when you draw this wall next to that wall, that these uh, two points, they don't exactly line up. 
So you get a little bit of a jagged, a little bit of a rigid jacked coalition line and the player will bump into all those different knocks and crannies in your coalition line that first of all will not make your wall or your cliff feel straight and the player's collision shape could even under certain circumstances get stuck in one of those crannies and those jagged lines. So that's not what you want and that's where the snapping really becomes powerful as a tool. So I'm going to delete the collision shapes of both these regions. I'm going to turn on my snap and now with snap on I can draw in every corner of the snapping grid I can now select as where the polygons need to go. Now of course this polygon is way too big and I don't really have the possibility to make this straight line here. Now my tip is to simply have the snap of the original texture size um, base, the, the base size of the, of, the, of, the, of the texture set. That's the way I should put it. So with this texture set the base size is 64 by 32. That's what we've set the snapping options for in the past. That's what allowed us to select exactly the uh, ground tiles. Well, these tiles are bigger, that doesn't matter. I'm still going to go with a 32 by 16, so I'm halving the size. I'll be deleting the collision shape again. As you can see, I can now draw the collision shape exactly on this grass line by halving that size. And I'll be completing this shape. Now, the player was standing on the south side of the pond, so let's have a look at that south side and make sure that that works. I'm going to be drawing out collision shape of this one and I'll be drawing out the collision shape of this one as I'll be using or I have used both of these. Now also I've used this one on the south side so let's get this shape in and let's do the same with this one. Now there's also a corner there now I'm not sure which what that will be this, cor this corner or that corner so let's just draw both of these out and this is the grass line that we want to make sure that the player is not able to access and I'm gonna do the same on this side. Now you might be saying hey you got a little bit of a cliff there that the player shouldn't be able to touch. Well the player has a sort of a margin in his collision shape to make sure that his arms don't glitch into any walls. These aren't walls but the same margin in his collision shape are gonna help us to make sure that it still feels and looks smooth. Now with that said I'm gonna go first before I demonstrate this I'm gonna go back in here oh and before we, we, we forget it we also must set the texture offset of course because these also have a texture offset so I'm gonna set the shape offset for these two atlas regions or atlas tiles as well there we go I'm gonna go back into the tile sheet example and I'm gonna go into the debug menu and I'll be activating the visible coalition shapes. This is gonna show the shapes while the game is running. And that's very handy for while well, debugging your coalition shapes, see if everything's going right, or to maybe find a bug if something went wrong. And right now you can see exactly how I've drawn my coalition shapes, and you can see how these polygons, through that snapping options, are exactly lining up. So the player doesn't get any sort of weird artifacts or jagged lines. And you can see how this corner is exactly lining up with the other one. Now for the inside corners, we got an inside corner there. We don't actually have to do anything with that. You, you don't have to add a collision shape as the face of this tile and this tile will be already be touching each other. So of the, uh, the outer corners, as I've called them, so that would be, when we quickly go into this, let's make this smaller. When you talk about the outer corners, so these corners, these don't need to have any collision shape at all, as it's only a point where two other shapes come together. Now I'll quickly draw out all the polygons for all those tiles to make sure that we can't get into this pond anymore and then I'll be back with you with a quick demonstration of how that looks. Okay we got all the faces in so now our player is not able to enter the water from any side of the pond. I've also added in the crate that we draw the uh, the free drawn collision shape to so now our player can also not walk over that crate. He can now interact with it. Now we've also added a boat in the middle of the pond here and let's take the next challenge let's make a walkway towards this boat to make sure that the player can get there but at the same time make sure that the player doesn't fall into the water if he falls off that, uh, that, that walkway. So let's get into that. Now for this walkway challenge I've already added the atlas tile for our walkways from the tile set. This is basically another region just like the uh, water cliffs, outer, straight, inner, etc. So I'm going to be on the water cliffs tile map 
I'll be adding these two starting walkways. Um, so that means I'm replacing the faces and that means I'm also replacing or removing those coalition shapes. These walkways, these entrances don't have any coalition shapes. So it means I've broken the coalition shape around the pond and now this piece is accessible. We could add maybe uh, two walkways here and we could have a look, okay, how are we gonna make sure that the player cannot jump into the water? We can, of course, go into the tile set. We can go to that specific walkway, that will be this one, and we could add those faces. We could say, okay, the player is not able to jump off this side. And we could add another face saying, okay, the player is also not able to jump off this side. But now it becomes difficult because if we don't want the player to jump into the water from here, well, the issue is that we'll be adding um, a stop on this side, but what if in another pond or another lake somewhere else in your game you want to use the same walkway, but now the entrance originates from the southwest instead of the northeast? That would mean that the player can now act, not access this walkway, and even if he would be able to get on it, he would jump off on this side. So that's an issue, and this issue compiles when you go back to the tile set because we're not at the boat yet. So we would have to add more of these. Um, walkways in order to actually get to the boat. Now with that set I gotta make sure that we uh, set in the region the uh, shape offset again to minus 32 as these are also two tiles high. When we play this game you see that well there's a whole bunch of coalition shapes on top of here now and our player is no way near able to access this boat. So that's an issue, an issue that we need to address. Now, what you could do, there's two solutions, and there's one, of course, that I prefer, but I also want to share with you the other solution. What you could do is you could add several atlases of walkways. You could simply copy that atlas a, t a second time, a third time, a fourth time. You could make walkways with only the water sign blocked. You can make walkways without any collision shapes. You can make walkways with both sides blocked or no sides blocked. You know, you could add all kinds of different atlas tiles with different coalition shapes to make sure that you got the building blocks that you you, you want to uh, to make sure you, you get the things or the result that, that you're trying to achieve. I prefer a different solution though and to demonstrate that solution I'm going to use the uh, second version of this walkway and I'll be replacing all these walkways. Now of course this one doesn't have a collision shape so now I've effectively removed all the collision shapes that were there but we still want the player not to jump into the water so how are we going to do that? Well, I'm simply going to be adding a child node here, and this is going to be a container node because you usually have a couple of these on the map, and I like to put them in a container to keep my project organized. I'm going to be renaming this to blocked areas, and simply I will be adding a static node 2D, static body, sorry, 2D, and to that we'll have to, of course, add a collision shape, and I'll be adding a polygon to it. Now with that polygon, I'm going to be from the grass line where the uh, collision shape of the tile set is, from that grass line I'll be drawing a line out and a little bit, I'm going to draw parallel with the walkway of course, but I'm going to be drawing it not on top of the walkway. And the reason for that is that the player has a little bit of a uh, collision margin as we discussed earlier. And with that collision margin, if we would draw this polygon straight on top of the walkway, that means that with the collision shape of the player, we would not be able to access the entire walkway. But there's no possibility of having any of our arms glitch into anything right here. So it actually looks better and feels more natural when the player can access the entire walkway. So that's why I'm keeping this polygon uh, collision shape a little bit outside. Now when I play the game, you'll see that the player, now that the other collision shapes are gone because I used the other tile, the player is able to walk up to this walkway all the way, but it's not looking weird. His feet are not like outside of the walkway because of the margin. So he can access the entire walkway. He can get on there, he can get close to the boat, Maybe if this was a big lake with a big river, this boat would maybe be interactable and he could go somewhere and he's able to get off again. So he's not able to get into the water. This is a flexible method of adding local static areas where the player can or should not be able to go. And this way you can combine the collision shapes of the tile set together with the collision shapes of like local areas to create the entire map interaction that you're after. So those are just some options that you have when creating coalition shapes to your maps. Now I got a challenge, another challenge. This is going to be a challenge for the next tutorial, but I want to show you what we're going to be doing there. So hang on. 
Now, for those of you that have been paying attention, you've probably seen this Y sort note here among my notes. And you may have seen my tutorial on Y sorting and especially to isometric maps and how that is very powerful. What I've done, I have added a little extra section here and that is a river system. Now you can see that all the collision shapes that we've been drawing for that pond to make sure that we can't get into the pond now I've also applied to this river system. And over this river, I've created this bridge, but that's a problem. I cannot access this bridge because of the collision shapes of the river that, uh, that run below it. So now I cannot get onto this bridge and that's of course what we want to be doing. So in the next episode, I'm going to be teaching you how you can make these coalition shapes interactive with the location of the player. So that when a player enters a certain location, certain coalition shapes are being turned on or off to make sure that the player can interact with the world the way that you want it to be able to. So stay tuned for that episode. I'll see you there. That was it for today, guys. Hope you like it. If you do, smash that like button, hit subscribe. Don't forget that bell icon to make sure you don't miss out on the next video. In the next video, we're going to be taking that bridge and we're going to make sure that we can cross it. Stay tuned and until then, keep on gaming, keep on going. See you later, guys.